got a good video for you guys today. I'm going to be hopping into some hot takes. And I'm sure, as you guys know, hot takes are probably not going to happen. I made 10 hot takes today, and I wouldn't be surprised if not a single one of them happens. But it's all for fun, and I had fun making the hot takes, so let's get right into the video. Hot take number one, I have the Cardinals and the Mets missing out on the postseason. The Cardinals and the Mets both have really, really good teams on paper, and pretty much everyone is picking both of them to make the postseason. Now for the Cardinals, they really don't have a bad team. Like I said before, they're pretty good on paper. They have Paul Goldschmidt, Nolan Arenado, Tyler O'Neill, Tommy Edmond. They have a lot of good bats offensively. But their pitching rotation is what kind of scares me a little bit. They have Jack Flaherty, who by no means is a bad pitcher. He's a really good all-star caliber pitcher at that. But he's heading into the year on the injured list, and they also have Adam Wainwright, who had a dominant season last year. He broke through and played very well, but this season, considering he's almost 40 years old at this point, I'm not too confident in him as well. Now, looking at the Mets, they also have a great team on paper, but I'm not a big believer in the Mets because it's the Mets. They have been notorious for underperforming year after year. They also have, if healthy, the best one-two punch in all of baseball in Jacob deGrom and Max Scherzer, but both of them are not healthy as of right now, and I can't confidently say that they will be healthy all year long. Next hot take today, I have the Miami Marlins finishing second in the National League East. Now this one isn't a very hot take because a lot of people are picking Miami to be improved off of last year. They have a dominant starting rotation that consists of a three-headed monster in Trevor Rogers, Sandy Alcantara, and Pablo Lopez. I think their pitching rotation is that good to get them second place in the NL East, and also looking at their offense, they are pretty decent as well. They have Jesus Aguilar, they picked up Jorge Soler, and they also have Jazz Chisholm, so they have a decent offense, it's not going to be the best in the world, but with how good their pitching rotation is going to be, I think it will be good enough to get them second place in the NL East. Next up, I have Byron Buxton finishing top three in the AL MVP voting if he stays healthy. Now, I know it should be a hot take just to state that this guy is going to be healthy all year long, but if he does stay on the field, he is a supreme talent, and I could really see him having a monster year. He just never seems to be able to stay on the field. He's only played over 100 games one time in his career. Last year, Buxton played in 61 games where he hit 306 with 19 home runs, 32 RBIs to go along with 9 stolen bases, a 1005 OPS, and a 4.5 war. He also has an insane glove out there in center field. He's one of the more athletic players in all of baseball, which is one of the reasons why he always gets hurt, because he always tries to make circus catches. But he's an extremely exciting player, and I know it's far-fetched to say he's going to stay healthy all year long, but if he does, hot take, he's going to finish top three in the AL MVP voting. Next up, I have Christian Yelich bouncing back and having a 30 home run, 30 stolen base season. Now, for me personally, I'm a big believer in Yelich this year. I think he will bounce back, but I think it is a little bit far-fetched to say he's going to have a 30-30 season, which is why I put it on today's list. If I'm being completely realistic, I probably think Yelich could have 20 home runs and 20 stolen bases, but 30 home runs, 30 stolen bases is asking for a lot from a player who has looked as bad as he has the past couple years. But heading into this year, Yelich looks fully healthy. He looks confident up there at the plate. And I think he could have a very good season, and I really don't think it's out of the realm to say he's going to have a 30-30 season. Next up, I have the Seattle Mariners winning 95-plus games en route to winning the AL West. This is one of the takes today that I actually believe could very possibly happen. I'm a huge believer in Seattle this year. They made some big off-season acquisitions to really improve off of last year's 90-win team. One key piece of Seattle's team is their bullpen. They have a very good and underrated bullpen, in my opinion. I think their bullpen could be top 10 in baseball. And one player on Seattle I have to mention in today's video that I'm super excited to watch is Julio Rodriguez. I'm psyched he got called up to the big leagues. He tore it up in spring training, and I think he has a legit shot to make a very big impact from day one. Speaking of Julio Rodriguez, getting into my next hot take... I have him making the all-star team and unanimously winning the American League Rookie of the Year. This one is a very hot take. This is really far-fetched. He's going to be a good player, but I'm not too sure he's going to be this good. The reason why I say this is a very hot take is because Rodriguez has some stiff competition. He's going to be going up against players like Bobby Witt Jr., Adley Rushman, Grayson Rodriguez, and Spencer Torkelson. But that's why I make videos like this, just for fun. I mean... 
This is probably not going to happen. Rodriguez probably won't unanimously win the Rookie of the Year award or make the All-Star team, but the way he's looked in spring training got me very excited to watch him this year, so hey, you never know. Next up, I have Bryce Harper, Kyle Schwarber, and Reese Hoskins combining for over 130 home runs. Now, this is a tough one because all three of these guys, as much power as they do have, each of them would have to hit above 40 home runs. I think it's very realistic for Harper to put up a 50 home run season. I'm really big on Harper this year. I have him as my National League MVP pick, and he's really been on fire this spring. So I think Harper is going to have a monster year. As for Kyle Schwarber and Reese Hoskins, they also have ridiculous power. They have 50 home run pop as well. But for this prediction to come true, pretty much everything has to fall into place perfectly. They have to be healthy all year long, and they pretty much have to be playing up to their full potential. Next up, I have the Baltimore Orioles not finishing in fifth place in the AL East. Now, this is a really hot take because the Baltimore Orioles are far and away the worst team on paper in the division. The four teams above them in the Rays, Blue Jays, Yankees, and Red Sox are all legitimate playoff teams and could potentially make the postseason this year. As for the Orioles, I believe they will be better than last year, but they are still far and away the worst team in the AL East. But again, this is probably not going to happen, but I think it's a fun hot take to make because you never know, something could go wrong for one of the teams in the AL East, and the Orioles could take a bigger leap than we're expecting and leapfrog one of those teams in the division. Now for the next hot take, I have the Colorado Rockies finishing third place in the NL West above the San Francisco Giants. As for this hot take, this is extremely biased. I, I'm going to admit it, I mean... I'm a big Rockies fan, and I'm not a huge fan of the Giants. Um, so realistically, maybe this could happen. I don't think this is too far-fetched. I like the Rockies' off-season moves, and as for the Giants, obviously they're going to be a lot worse than last year. So will this happen? Probably not. But I'm a big Rockies fan, as most of you guys know, so I'm going to be rooting for this one to happen all year long. As for my 10th and final hot take of today's video, I have Shane Bieber doing something that only 19 pitchers have done in the modern era, and that is striking out 300 plus batters. Now, as for all of the hot takes in today's video, I think this is one of the more realistic ones. Bieber had 259 punchouts back in 2019, so if this guy stays healthy all year long with how good his stuff is, I could see this one happening. Back in 2020, when he won the AL Cy Young Award, he had a ridiculous 14.3 strikeouts per 9 innings. With this guy in the heart of his prime, if he stays healthy all year long, I would not be surprised to see this one happen. So there you have a couple of my hot takes heading into the 2022 season. Let me know what you guys think down below, where you agree or disagree, and also some hot takes of your own. And as always, if you guys do enjoy the content, feel free to subscribe. I'm going to continue to post more videos here as we head into the 2022 campaign. And lastly, I want to thank you guys again so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.